Welcome back to the Courtney's Notes version. Health Matters Simplified, so you can understand. Here we are. It is Wednesday night. I can see that that light was... Hmm. So we've done some lighting stuff here, and we are live. It is Wednesday night after golf, and we're going to do some stretching. So let's get straight to the stretching. Anytime that we're working here with our body, we're going to remember that we're always going to move it, that we're going to stretch it, and then we're going to strengthen it. Today, it's actually my right shoulder that's hurting the most. And so we're going to start by working on the right shoulder. But anytime we work on the shoulder, we're actually going to start with a little bit of work on the neck. And anytime we work on the neck, we got to make sure that we're stabilized here in the core. So let's start out by stabilizing our core. We're going to sit tall, engaging the back muscles. Then we're going to flex our stomach and squeeze our kegels just a little bit we're going to retract our head getting our ear over top of our shoulder over top of our hip and let's start with a little bit of motion these wednesday nights are really to follow along and feel better i know i've got lower back pain on the title and lower back pain is something that i'm having today and it's something that we're going to go over here in just a little bit but this right shoulder is actually hurting just a little bit more so that's where we're starting anybody that's watching just type any questions that you have into that text message bar there and i'll see them pop up and then i'll take a look and, and answer any questions that we have but what we're doing here right now is some motion for the shoulder and what i've done is i've taken my fingers and i'm just following my collarbone down to where it attaches here at the acromioclavicular joint or the AC joint. It's right here. You can feel it. And you're going to want to hold that down. And then we make a figure eight motion. And a figure eight, so I like to come back like I'm making a scoop or a little circle there and then forward with the circle. And we're just going to loosen that up and there's a big crunch. And getting a little motion into that shoulder with some figure eights. I'm going to feel balanced. So let's go ahead and do that with the other side. Kind of feeling that pull up into the shoulder. So let's take a quick step back to the neck there again. I feel like if we loosen the neck up, then that's going to help with that shoulder. So we start with some shrugs. And when we drop our shoulders, we're breathing out. And then let's do some, some rolls. So when we do our rolls, we're going to go up and back and down and relax. And up and back and down and relax. This is really getting some motion into the muscles that are in the neck and the shoulder. So here a little bit. And then let's do some neck range of motion. You remember that from the other videos. If you've watched any of my videos, we've got some with the neck and the shoulders. We're going to go up, down, do some up, downs. You can see we're doing a slow, controlled movement here, making sure we stay stabilized through the core. And then a little retraction, getting our head over our shoulder. And let's do a little side to side. Oh, man, that feels tight. So when it feels tight, sometimes I'll just put a little pressure into the muscles. So I've got two fingers here. So I'm using these two fingers here. And I'm pressing right there into that muscle in my shoulder. And I'm just applying a straight downward pressure into the trigger point, And then I'm lightly flexing my head 
over that way, making sure again that I stay engaged in the core. That means sitting tall, looking good, engaging the Kegels. Here's Basil. Hi, Basil. What are you doing? Huh? Basil was at the clinic today with me. You're doing good. Yeah. Let's go back to some rolls. I'm going to turn sideways here so you can really see those rolls. We're staying engaged here through the core. The back muscles or stomach muscles are just gently creating tension around the cylinder that is our core. And then we're going to go up, back, down, relax. And I hope everybody is following along right now because this is going to help you to feel better. If you're having tension in your neck and shoulders, right now I'm feeling some pain in my right shoulder specifically. This is going to help. All right, now we can do some circles, and I'm ready for a full circle. So again, we take those fingers, we follow the collarbone down, we hold the clavicle or the collarbone down, and then I like to do a big forward circle. Oh, yeah. And let's do the other arm. So two fingers, follow it down. And then I'm using the palm of my hand at that junction point to hold that down. And then, oof, this one we didn't loosen up. So I'm starting now with a gentle figure eight. Oh, and a big crunch. Oh, just to loosen that up a little bit. When I say a figure eight, I'm drawing the figure eight with the point of my elbow. So it's going backwards in the circle. And then it's coming to my waist. And then it's going forward to a circle because it's coming back to my waist. And that's a really good way to get some motion into the shoulder. And then we can do some forward circles. All right. And we'll come back to it. We hadn't finished the neck motion yet, but and these after golf cool down sessions, I'm just letting my body guide me to what should be the next thing that we're doing. So if we jump around a little bit, um, it's because that's where my body's taking me in that moment. And we're doing just a little more figure eight for some motion. I'm doing, it's like I'm scooping water in front of me and then I'm releasing it behind and then scooping up some more with a big figure eight motion for the shoulder and staying engaged in the core while we do these figure eights. Crunch. All right. And back to the neck. So we engage in the core, sit tall a little bit, squeeze in the Kegels, and then up, down. We'll get to the lower back here in just a little bit. And side to side, it's a little bit looser now that we worked on that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the repetitions here. We like to do three to five repetitions of each of the exercises here that we're doing. Right now we're doing a lateral bend for some motion here in the neck. And then let's do some turn in one direction. And then some turn in the other direction. Turn and turn. And this one, oh yeah. Sometimes I like to put a little pressure there. Oh yeah, holding just a little bit there. So now we're combining some motion. Doesn't look like there's any questions. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to just put those in the chat box and we'll be glad to, to answer those here 
at any time. All right, so the shoulder is feeling just a little bit better, and so I'm ready to start working on the lower back, but my food has not settled yet. I had a Cobb salad. I love the Cobb salad. Uh, the Cobb salad is going to have, well, let's talk about that while we start into the lower back. So since I can't lay on my back right now because I'm feeling that Cobb salad, let's do it standing. So we're going to do some standing lower back. Just going to move the table. And when we move the table, we want to squat and brace with our stomach. There we go. All right. So we have learned the pelvic curls, the wag the tail, and the pelvic rolls in previous videos. <clears throat> those are in the low back pain getting started, and those are in some of the other videos that we do. Hi, Basil. And so when we have a full stomach, we can do those standing as well. Here, let me just tuck my shirt in. Oh, it's a little bit warm. Let me just tuck my shirt in here so you can see exactly what we're doing. So we're going to start here with the standing pelvic curls. So when we do the standing pelvic curls, we're going to squat just a little bit. So when we squat, we're hinging with our hip and we're hinging with our knee and our ankle, making sure that our knee does not go forward of our toes. And then we're going to flex our stomach, tucking our butt under and let it relax. And then arch, sticking our butt out and let it relax and go back and forth. Just getting some motion here in the spine. We've seen this in the quadruped position and we've seen this lying down. We'll do it again here lying down in just a little bit. Whew, and that is really tight. So since that's feeling really tight, I want to get a little bit of motion in there a different way. And so this is some rotation in the spine. Some high steps touching the elbow across to the opposite knee. And when we do that, the shoulder comes forward and the knee comes across and we're twisting at the spine. And so that feels really good. And my legs are feeling really tight here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do some leg stretches here next. Again, just following where my body is taking me to feel better. So when we do a standing hamstring stretch, we're going to start out facing towards the toe directly. The leg is straight. The spine is straight, pointing the toe back. And that's as far as I need to go. It might look like, well, he's not stretching it at all. He's just standing there with his foot on the table. But that's as much as it needs. Whew, that's as much as it needs for me right now. I'm feeling that right there in the back of my leg. And we're cooling down here. Another stretch you can do. Oh. Getting into those hips, getting into the hip flexor, into the psoas here in the back. Last week, we looked at that psoas, that main hip flexor, and talked about why it's so important to always flex, pardon me, to always stretch that hip flexor. Hi, Basil. Did you have a good day today? And then we can go straight into the hamstring. Back to the psoas. So I'm stretching the psoas here. <laughs> Bless you. All right, very good. Now I'm feeling some tension on the front of my legs. And so stretching the front of the legs is something that you can do standing. And <clears throat> when we stretch that, we're going to stand tall, so we're going to 
engage our core muscles here and stand on one leg. So now we're firing proprioceptors as well. And we're going to stretch. There we go. Stretching the front of the leg. And mine are, man, they're stiff today. That was that one. Now we're doing the other one. Am I doing a good job, Hazel? Let's try it. Let's try this one. So we're going to grab the ankle. And we're really pulling the foot, pulling the heel towards the buttock, trying to keep our spine straight, the legs straight with that knee just pointing straight down to the ground. And we're going to hold that for 10 to 15 seconds. You do that about three to five times. Let's go ahead and do that. And in between those, I like to do just a little bit of motion. It's kind of like you're dancing, just kind of shifting the weight from side to side. And then do the other side. And hold. So we were talking about the Cobb salad earlier. And I love the Cobb salad because it has eggs in it. And eggs are great. Does anybody know why eggs are great? Because they are made of what we call the perfect protein. And the perfect protein is that protein that has all of the essential amino acids in it that we need. And so eggs are great. And people might be going, oh, but they have a lot of cholesterol in the, in the yolk of that egg. And it's true, there is cholesterol in the yolk, but we need cholesterol too. Our body uses the cholesterol backbone in order to create hormones and we need to be creating hormones and we need a little bit of that good cholesterol to do that in fact every hormone is created with a cholesterol backbone if i'm remembering the chemistry correctly oh stretching that psoas again right now i'm getting that right psoas all right, and I think it's been just about long enough here now where I can lay down and work on that lower back. So we started with the neck and the shoulders there a little bit, and then we did some standing motion with the pelvic curls. We can also do pelvic rolls, and we can do pelvic circles in both directions. And that's feeling quite a bit better there already. But let's stretch this out here just a little bit more. At home, I recommend that you get out your exercise mat, lay it down, <laughs> and then you're going to lay flat on your back. And let's start by pulling a knee to the chest. And just breathe out as you let your knee come up towards your chest. And hold. And then do the other side. And hold. And we're going to go back and forth here. This is getting a good stretch. They really should have called this the knee to armpit stretch because you really want to let your leg kind of come off to the side and then pull it up towards the armpit. And that's going to give a really good stretch in there. Holding that for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then we're going to do the twist, especially after golfing, because golf, the golf swing is a rotation loop. We want to make sure we do these twist stretches. So we're going to shift our hips over. Oh, this is my favorite stretch. I know I say that a lot, but that's because it is. I like to do this stretch every single day. And especially after playing golf, I like to do this stretch and do it the other direction as well. Not Holding that for about 10 to 15 seconds. This stretch is getting the lower back, it's getting the hip a little bit. And we're going to do it again the other way. We're remembering to breathe. When you exhale, you can let that stretch go just a little bit further. Bumping up against the edge of discomfort, but never push hard into pain. 
pain is your body's warning signal that something is, is going to be harmed. And so we don't want to cause harm, so we don't push harm into pain. And this is feeling really good. My back really needed this today. And for those of you following along at home, I hope your back is feeling better as well. If you like our content and if this information is helping you to have a, a healthier spine, please subscribe to the channel and like the content and, and make some comments. Ask me some questions. I'll be glad to answer things for you. What I bring to the table really is that doctor-patient perspective. I've had three ruptured discs in my lower back. And so this is the stuff that I do. I like to call it the spinal hygiene. And I like to call it that because hygiene is, is implied that you're going to do it every day. One of those funniest questions that I get in the clinic is when people come in and they say, Doc, how often should I do my exercises or how often should I exercise? And I say, well, you should exercise every day. Hey, but I thought three, four times a week is enough. Well, okay, three or four times a week for each body part, but then you switch different body parts. And so really you want to exercise every single day. And your core, you can exercise your core every day. In any part of your body that's hurting, it has scar tissue, it has damage, it, it needs extra attention, those parts you can work on every day also. And I know I'm kind of ranting here just a little bit and doing, doing what is going to make me feel better, and that is to continue to move through the motions here getting motion into my hip and I'm getting motion into my leg and I'm getting motion into my back and things are feeling better. This is the traditional hip stretch here where we start flat on our back, knees and feet, shoulder distance apart, cross the leg over, knee, hand on the knees and then pull it up. Oh, and my left hip right now is getting a good stretch. I like to add some ankle rolls while I do this one. And switching over to the other side. When I was trying to think of what to call these, I was going to call this real life hygiene. And that's because this is real life. This is my back and leg are hurting from sitting today and then playing golf. And now I'm trying to get it to feel better and, and succeeding, getting it to feel better. I don't think we've talked about what I'm doing here right now. So this is just a different hip stretch that I do where I've got one leg down. I've got the sore hip with the foot crossed across the opposite knee. And then I'm taking the knee of the sore hip and I'm bringing it across towards the opposite shoulder. And then I'm pushing it away in a direction that's exactly opposite to the shoulder. And then I feel a stretch into the hip. And I'm going back and forth. And the first time I did it, it made a big pop as the pressure, some of that pressure was released. We know that that popping noise is really not the intention of what we're trying to do. What we're really trying to do is create motion to improve our flexibility and to feel better. Loosen the muscles up, get the bones moving so that we can get the nerves flowing well. So we're doing a little bit now with this leg. And then I'm going to go back into the rotational stretch, the pelvic twist stretch, also known as the spinal twist stretch or the full spine twisting stretch when you add your upper body to it. Uh, so let's go to that here next. And that's really starting to loosen up here now. Again, this is after golf stretching. 
This is the Carney Zone version, Health Matters Simplified, so you can understand. We always go back to motion. Right now I'm doing some pelvic rolls. Just kind of swinging my hips from side to side. Doing extension only right now. I'm not really doing any flexion because the flexion was irritating it maybe a little bit more. The flexion is when we're using our stomach to curl it under. And the extension is when our stomach is relaxed and we're using our back muscles to stick our butt out. And so when we do those rolls, sometimes we just arch it to one side and let it roll over and arch it to the other side and let it roll over. And then some single knee to chest stretch. And we're winding it down. Let me just check. Now, when we get up, we want to get up properly. So we're going to roll on our side. We're going to press down with our top arm, push down and let our legs swing off to the side. Let's see, do we have any notes? Yes, we got some notes here. All right, let's stretch just a little bit more here. We're just gonna respond to the note. All right, and let's stretch just a little bit more. Ooh, pardon me. I suffer with allergies, and so when golfing, sometimes my sinuses get a little, a little bit congested, but we'll get that here in just a little bit. Back to some curls. Just a little bit of motion. Oh. All right, and that's feeling pretty good. So I think we should call that for tonight. Basil, did you have a good day? Did you have a good day? Did you want to say goodbye? Did you want to say goodbye? Basil was with me today at the clinic. Thank you for watching the Courtney's Notes version. And remember, get adjusted because it feels good.